Lawmakers reject bill empowering Nigerians to sue government for not providing basic welfare. And on insecurity, presidential panel seeks support for armed forces reforms from the House of Representatives. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacom. The House of Representatives has rejected a bill seeking the, uh, to make the provision of basic welfare compulsory. The bill, sponsored by Sejos Ogun, PDP Edo, sought to amend Section 6 of the 1999 Constitution by allowing the judiciary to entertain cases on the provision of basic welfare as contained in Section 13, 14, 15, 16 through to 21. Now, joining us to discuss this is public affairs analyst Ambrose Igboke and legal practitioner Ladikbo Johnson. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. Okay. And thank you, Ambrose, for joining us. I'm going to start with you, Ladikbo, because you are a, a lawyer. But the first question that comes to mind is, why do we need an extra bill to um, get our leaders to do right by us? I'm asking this because the average Nigerian would think that the Constitution should accommodate that from the get-go. Well, the Constitution um, basically says that we're entitled to these benefits, these welfare things, um, shelter, you know, things like that. Um, but the Constitution, um, well, cleverly, because of those who um, brought it to life, into being, stopped short of allowing us to go to court mm -hmm. regarding those benefits. So it's not justiciable? Not justiciable. And um, I suppose the fact that um, the country is where it is at at the moment, um, that probably got the um, member um, thinking that if government will face um, lawsuits from individuals in society, then government will be forced to ensure that it does what is right by the people. Um, but of course, we know that it was um, shouted down. It mm. didn't happen. But I, I take it that that is the reason why the bill was um, brought forth in the first place. Well, I mean, like I said, there are sections in, in the Constitution all the way down till 21 that makes those accommodations. Um, but then we've, we've been pushing for these amendments in our constitution. Uh, what exactly have we been amending? If the most obvious, again, the average Nigerian is supposed to have access to basic amenities, which we do not have because we have become somewhat of a government to ourselves. Mm. You have your own light, you, you, mm. you dig your own borehole. Exactly. You literally almost grade the road that leads to your house. So, <laughs> so again, and you're still being taxed, by the way. So why would our lawmakers, I'm still asking this question because these people are supposed to be there to serve us. Uh, although one person, let's just say one person, remembers that he's there to serve the people, but the rest of it, um, you know, seems you know, not to be okay the, with the it. The key word from what you said is these people are supposed to, are lawmakers, supposed to be our lawmakers, but they are not. Um, uh, unfortunately, that is the reality of it all. Mm. And it's not their fault. It's because that, um, we don't hold them to account. That's the, that's the problem with the country, one of the main problems. The people do not hold those in government to account. You have an opportunity to do that every four years. The basic mm. thing, you have an opportunity to do that. I, I, I want to disagree with you. Okay. But Ambrose Ziboke is joining us live um, via Zoom. Ambrose, I, I want to take it up from where Mr. Johnson is uh, stopping. He's talking about the fact that we have every four years to decide to hold these people to account. But some people have, we've seen even governors in Lagos, we've seen some people do a term and then go their way. 
Do we have to wait for four years to hold our leaders accountable? Um, and the constitution makes it very clear that uh, we can actually, uh, uh, there are constitutional provisions that we can remove uh, elected leaders. One of it is impeachment. Uh, the other one is recall. For example, the senators or the House of the lawmakers can be recalled. So those uh, uh, amendments are there, I mean, the provisions are there in the constitution. Uh, it is because of the Nigerian docility. Um, the, the concept of power belongs to God. Uh, the concept of um, uh, uh, clannishness that says, oh, this person is our own, that makes us think, oh, okay, uh, God has given him power, don't worry, the next four years, even if the person is doing very bad, we still wait for four years. We don't need to wait for four years. But who made the clannishness, or this, is, this person's our own, um a thing in the country because it, it, it obviously starts from somewhere and now it's become acceptable i don't know to what yeah, extent but how did we allow it to get to a point where it's become so acceptable i know that we see things through two two major prisms which is religion and ethnicity but why do we allow it to affect us especially in a way that it might be killing us well, because uh, uh, first of all, the Nigerian project is not seen as a, a project for nationhood right from time. We remember uh, in 1948, uh, Chief of Africa, who said that Nigeria was a mere geographical expression. And we have heard foremost politicians, even leaders in the past, even our nationalist leaders in the First Republic, who won't refer to Nigeria as a mistake, a geographical mistake. Um, uh, so, um, if when Nigeria wanted to get independence in 1959, they not said they were not ready. So, first of all, every Nigerian sees himself from the prism of his ethnic bloc first, before seeing himself as a Nigerian. So, we ask yourself, where are you from? This person, we have uh, Udua, we have uh, the people who are state from Biafra, we have uh, uh, Pandem, we have Injo, this, we have uh, Northern groups. So, the country itself is not seen as a nation where uh, the interest of the country is placed above ethnic uh, clannishness. So the first thing is, you first of all belong to your ethnic bloc. Then, before you start talking about the nation. So that is how we are configured. And that is because the nation itself was not an agreement of the different ethnic nationalities that forms the states. Students of history will know that the way Nigeria came to be, was just uh, the unilateral decision of the business uh, uh, interest of the British uh, conglomerates, the Royal Niger Company. And then uh, they brought the started sending people, officers like, uh, they want the Lord that woke up on 1st January 1940. And what British, British had earlier created what they call Northern Protectorate and uh, Southern Protectorate. And then just 1st January 1940, just brought two of them together and named them a country called Nigeria without any recourse to what the national ethnicities were. Remember then, there were the, the, the great kingdoms of uh, places like uh, Bini Kingdom was an independent entity, Opopo was an independent entity, the uh, Oyo uh, Empire was on its own. So a lot of other empires were running on their own, and then somebody just came and merged them together with brute force. Therefore, since that time, we have not still, have, we have not grown to have that, uh, you know, cohesion as a country. And that is what is affecting us to date, even a hundred years after. So um, it is foolhardy to say that we think of the country first. But in the context of our discussion, when a lawmaker represents you at the Senate or House of Arabs or House of Assembly, it's not representing the country. It's representing that your clannish interests. It's representing that your ethnic interests. It's representing your own interests. Therefore, we should not see it as if it's representing Nigeria. So it's I not mean, a Nigerian I mean, body. When, even though it is a personal body. Even if they're representing constituencies or senatorial districts, um, when they're making laws, they're not making laws for the Ogoni Central Senatorial District. They're making laws for Nigeria. So I, I don't necessarily, I mean, this is my opinion. I, it doesn't sit well with me when the you laws, say the they're laws, making it for the class. Laws. The laws the senator House of Reps is making should not be against the interest of his people. Therefore, his first interest is for his people, first of all. In the context of Nigeria, that is the reality. 
And that is why when we see what is okay, what will favor Nigeria that will favor the, the rest of the country. And then we already have this thing for the constitution, for example, Federal Character Commission and all those things. I say that when you do certain things, you consider every part of the country because of our peculiar nature. Mm. But if you don't follow that process, therefore, when we go to the center, the truth is that when we go to the center in Abuja, every person goes there to negotiate for what is better for his own people or for self. That is what happens in Abuja. Mm. Let me come back to um, Mr. Johnson. There are, there are lots of things that... Um, would this particular bill would have addressed if it was not shouted down, even though there's still lots of people questioning why it was shouted down. Um, let's start with the basic amenities that we have. I went to Anambra to cover the election. The federal roads looked like a footpath to my village, and my village is properly tired, by the way. Um, and we saw, it, we saw a lot of things that should not be um, so let's just talk about the basic infrastructure, like roads, like, you know, having access to education, having access to health care. We've not been able to scratch the surfaces. I mean, you can also make that argument that state governors have a hand in it. But we run a system, or a unitary system, even though we call it a federal system, that everything runs from the top. So why can't we as people support this person who's brought this bill to light. Yes, basically because um, those who are in the National Assembly or the majority that shouted the bill down realize and know that um, the government will not be able to or is not able to or doesn't have the political will to um, ensure that it provides um, these amenities for the people of the country. Do Look, you mean they do not want to, have no intention to, will never want um, to? Well, I think Because I don't that understand that they yes, may not uh, have the capacity. I, I, they, <laughs> they, they're there for self first, mm -hmm. if I want to put it bluntly. Mm -hmm. And look, we, have, um, we had COVID, we had economic difficulties. Has this government, any part of this government, any arm, have they cut the costs of governance? They haven't. They're buying jeeps. They're buying everything. And, hey, people tighten your belt. Well, they're not doing any tightening. So that makes you realize that they are either just self-centered or it's some, almost like a criminal enterprise um, running on free, free flow. So, unfortunately, that will continue. We've seen it. Now, when I said um, so you nothing, have... Nothing that's going to stop yeah. it. That's what no, you mean. no, no, no. Something will stop it. It has to... Something has to give after a while. Well, so that's uh, it is the patience of the people. After a while. Yes, we're docile. You know, the, the, the other guest said it. We're docile. Now, when I said um, four years, I didn't mean that you couldn't recall or what have you. I know that. But it's like, if you're not even able to come out though every four years to cast your ballot to question them and to give them the agenda he's very right when he says that they're going there we're talking about the senators and um, members of the house now they're going there to negotiate on behalf of their constituents right now if they cannot even do that then what are we talking about um, back to you, Ambrose. It's very interesting. Um, La Mr. Ladibo Johnson is making very interesting points as to um, the fact that our lawmakers don't necessarily want to do these things. Because I'm guessing that if, we, if you come to me and ask for my votes, go through all that trouble, spend money to buy a ticket, and you tell me, you try to convince me that you are the man for the job, and then you're giving the job only for you to enrich yourself or make laws that don't necessarily um, indict you in any way. Um, it really makes it cause for concern, but voting another set of people back into office, that's not really the solution, is it? What can the Nigerian state do, including the people? We have civil societies, we have 
pressure groups what can we do to arrest this situation because it's it it, it calls it calls to um you know question even our electoral processes even us as a people where we really want to go as a country doesn't it well, well, well first of all i mean uh, politicians everywhere or leaders everywhere are usually controlled by the kind of followers they have. When you go to Europe or the United States of America or Canada or countries where the leaders seem to obey the do well or take the country as hard, it's not because they are better than Nigerian politicians. They are not. They behave well because they know that their people are not docile. They behave according to the rules and they must perform because they know that if they don't, their people will impeach them or will recall them or will make uh, uh, the, 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 their governorship hellish. They will protest, they will picket, they will harass you. Imagine, look at the way Donald Trump was harassed, in fact, harassed for four years by the media in the United States of America. It was, a, it was war between both until he left office. So the leaders there, it's not that they are too good. It's because they know the consequences of inaction. They know the consequences of failure. Even they have gone beyond that to even begin to question the ethics or morality of the politician. We saw what happened to the governor of, uh, of Texas the other day. You know, people are not have gone beyond even what you can do in office to even your personal ethical behavior and you know morality. That is how you know they have tightened the news of their politicians. But back home, what do we have? The politician goes to Abuja senator, he's coming back home. There's a long line of people waiting for him to get largies from him. There are long lines of people who cannot pay hospital bills. Who cannot pay school fees, who have birthdays, who want to bury their parents, who want to do all sorts of things. And then he has packages to them. And then what do we have? The man, of course, we go and steal because the, the salary is ending at a so Does he have a gun to his head? Does, does, and then for doesn't he, he have a choice to say no? Doesn't he have a choice to say no? Does he have a gun to his head? What you're saying, I, I understand, but he does also have a choice to say no. Because and then where did, this, where and did then people, this well, but but the, where do we expect him? And I, I get where you're yeah. going. You're saying we're part of the problem, but but then if if somebody somewhere says no, then of course a lot of people would know not to go there or to make these requests. No, no, no. It, 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 if if the business, I mean, politics is uh, it, it, politics is a business. It, 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 it's it's a it's a social business. Social contracts with the people. So if the people have a social contract, with that, that all they need for you to do, whether you do well, whether you pay, whether you build road or not, all they need to do is that when they have a name ceremony, give them money. When they have birthdays, when they want to bury their father, mother, if they want to get school, get school fees, give do women empowerment, do some sewing machine, give women clothes, give them motorcycles, if that they want. Okay, people. we're having connection issues with you, um, Amber, so we're going to try to fix that. But back to you, Ladipo. Um, it's interesting. He's, we can, we're part of the problem. Mm -hmm. we're, we're the ones who lead these people. But if our lawmakers, if our, all our politicians assume the position of Santa Claus because they feel the need to give back to the people... Um, there also has to be a group of people questioning where these monies are coming from. Shouldn't there be? I'm, I'm saying there has to be checks and balances one way or the other, but it looks like we've just into every form of right. morality in this particular space. No, let me, let me just say something. Now, they go back to their constituents. Most times, most times, those constituents are those who are dependent on them. Most of them are unemployed. 
or retired, do not have a way forward within the Nigerian society. Mm -hmm. These people are the people who will collect 2,000 naira, 1,000 naira, 4,000 naira, beans, groundnut oil, and car to vote. Those who are thinking, or who think like you are, they don't go out to vote most times. They don't even know where the constituency office is. Mm. So those are the ones who are meant to be the... So Check you're saying the responsibility of checking and balancing lies with the middle class? Yes, the almost non-existent middle <laughs> class, right? <laughs> yes. That is where the problem lies in Nigeria. One of the main places. Oh, we have so many problems. Those who know or who ought to know. And then we're losing people every day. Now... Let's go to the traditional family. Say the man is a breadwinner. He's going to work straight and narrow path. His friend comes up with a BMW today. In two months, comes up with a Range Rover. If he has a worldly wife, she begins to question him. Uh, Where till you they look? Your friends are doing this and that. And that is where the problem comes in. <laughs> so, it has reached a stage, it's now cancerous. It's reached a stage whereby it's like, look, you have to join in. If not, you will not survive. And this country is geared and skewed towards pushing the average person to corruption, towards corruption. How so? Example. You say you seize houses from politicians or people who have embezzled in Asokoro and in water, and then you now say you are putting it up for auction or for sale. Who, who, how many people are doing legitimate work that can uh, buy those houses and auction uh, houses in Nikoi or whatever? I'm not saying there are no successful businessmen. There are. I was about to ask But that. on average, you know as much as I do. So that is it. Mm. It is so unfortunate. Don't ask me where we begin to solve the problem. Be it's, um, because we're, we're talking about this, the problems now. How mm. do we get the solutions? I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm saying this bill empowers the average Nigerian. And this average Nigerian might not necessarily be the person who needs 2,000, but then that's the person who really needs government the most. Those mm. people who need those basic health centers or health posts to be working, those people who go to hospitals and they're asked to buy everything down to a scissors, those are the people who should be empowered, not you and I who can afford an Uber. So, <laughs> so I'm asking, what, are, what is the solution? 2023 is around the corner. Next year is campaign season. The mm. rice is going to be rolled out. That's the the money is going to come out. Maybe, so. and that's why I said that it will get to a stage whereby we will not have an option. Um, do, we, do we have an option now? Is there, well, no, are there any are, options? Still do. Even now, what as I was options? coming to the studio here, I saw a truck. Here in VI, one of your neighbors delivering bags of rice. And I knew immediately that those was, they, they were probably for a hamper thing to give out. Uh, so they, 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 it's still, you know, you go, um, I came from a party today, this afternoon. So you have, you still have people still making ends meet, whatever. It hasn't reached that stage. When it gets to that stage, then, unfortunately, we will be the first to suffer. The mm. middle class who live amongst the people will be the first. Look, look, remember the answers. Those in Lekki suffered from those that came across from like Jack on the Estates and what have you. They suffered from them. They didn't say, no, the politicians are in VI and Nikoi. 
They went straight to those who were near, near them. Mm -hmm. And that is what will happen. And by the time they finish with us, the police and military would have fortified the Asokoros and what have you. So the middle class must begin to act. How do we educate the average person that we're not the enemy? Because you see, that's also another problem. We, it's quick to, they're quick to come after the average person because they feel like, it's well, you're able to afford this. It's difficult to educate a hungry man. It is. You try to educate them. You tell them that don't sell your vote, this, that, that. And say, ah, Marianne, you're right. I know. But you see, that election comes. The person is hungry. You've educated her. You've gone, you're coming to work. You're busy every day. Then that person going for reps or assembly comes to her two days before elections. Gives them, them money and says to them, on election morning, you get 2,000. And after the votes have been counted, come over, you'll get another two. And you now come out. You've been to work. You won't even be there. You'll be reporting on the day of the elections. And the person comes out again and says, Mama, don't forget to vote your conscience. Says, what conscience? You, you understand? It's a sad situation. So I always say that the politicians had deliberately impoverished the people mm. in this country so that they know that they can throw the uh, money out like corn. Mm. I was listening to the radio this morning, London Broadcasting, and uh, I heard a caller say that Nigerians are not necessarily running away from a, a war or a coup. Uh, someone suggested that there might be a coup in Nigeria, and that's why they have so many of them crossing over in dinghies. And, um, and somebody said, well, they're mostly economic migrants, and that's because the politicians in their country are stealing all the money. And I was embarrassed because I was a Nigerian listening to this conversation on the London radio. But how long can we take the 2000s and the rice that finishes in a week and that politician never shows up again? Until something gives. I would really think that something has given already. Or is it that when you push a Nigerian to the wall, he carves a comfortable space in that wall? Will we ever get to that point in closing? Will we ever get to that point? I hope so. It takes well, a maybe few... maybe we're okay We with might not even get to that point um, and when we'll begin to turn the ship to face the right di direction. You understand? Um, it takes a few good how men hopeful, and women. How hopeful are you? I'm pushing you. How hopeful are you? Because um, every opportunity to push back on the government seems to have been taken away from us in terms of the fact that now you cannot necessarily protest. They say it on paper that you can protest, but every time there's a planned protest, the commissioner for, for, of police in Lagos, for example, Odumosu will come out and say, <laughs> no, no protesting. Um, you can't do it at the uh, fountain in Abuja. You can't protest. Um, here we have a, the reports of the answers that the federal government is saying it's tails by moonlight. So... <laughs> Really, will we ever be able to get to that point? Because it looks like there's a sellotape over the mouth of the average Nigerian, in closing. Um, well, I believe we'll get there. I believe we'll get there. I think that um, the generation coming behind us, if we look at what happened with the NSARS, have shown themselves to be more militant. And I keep telling my friends that these ones coming behind us, are going to blow those in government away and blow us who haven't done anything away as well. So we will get there because you see, you can only run, you can only run away to find comfort in Europe and other places. Only so many people can go. After a while, you know, some will not go and they'll start to say, I don't even want... You see, the problem now is that a lot of the people who can say no, my generation, are people who are also thinking, oh, let me go into government. But these ones 
are people who don't give a damn about government and will simply say, boom. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to it that. It has to if you want the change to come. If the change doesn't come naturally, it will come by force. Well, Ladipa Johnson is a legal practitioner and, of course, Ambrose Igboke is a political analyst. Unfortunately, we lost him due to connection. But thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, a presidential panel for the reform of the armed forces seeks support from the House of Representatives. Stay with us.